In this video, I'll explain to you how injuries heal and how you can use the body's natural healing process combined with a little bit of rest and careful strengthening exercise to make the best recovery possible. Welcome, my name is Mareka and I'm the physiotherapist at sportsinjuryphysio.com. If this is your first time here and you would like to learn how to stay injury free, make sure to subscribe and hit the little bell so that you don't miss any of the updates. How do injuries heal? Now, this may sound a bit weird coming from a physiotherapist, but you don't actually need to be massaged or um, manipulated or receive acupuncture or anything like that for your injury to heal. Those type of techniques can all make the symptoms feel better. It can take pain away or it can decrease pain for a little bit. Um, it can take muscle spasm away. But the fact is that all of these symptoms will return again if the injury doesn't heal correctly. And your body is pretty good at healing itself as long as you give it the right circumstances to do so. So what do bodies need? Basically, they need a combination of rest and exercise. Now, rest alone is not useful because our bodies are programmed to survive and to survive it is forever trying to conserve energy. Um, so if you just rest something and you don't actually use that body part for a long period of time, the brain just thinks that you don't need it and it doesn't see a reason to make it stronger. That's why often the pain will settle, but you go back to sport and then you re-injure yourself quite quickly. Now on the flip side, if you try and strengthen it too quickly and it's not ready for it, you will also tear the new cells that's formed because they're not strong enough for it. So it's quite important to get that combination of rest and exercise right to get the injury stronger. And the essential part to getting that right is actually understanding the heal healing process. Now, it's not difficult. It's got three components. The first is the inflammatory phase. The second is the proliferation phase. And the third is remodeling phase. So let's look at what these phases mean. The first one, the inflammatory phase, is pretty much just what it says. It lasts for about, it starts immediately when you in, get injured, and then it lasts for about the first five to seven days. So let's have a look at what happens when you sustain an injury. I'm gonna use a calf muscle strain as an example because it's quite a common injury that people get. So a muscle strain happens when some of the muscle fibers tear and you often also tear a few blood vessels. And if you do a proper job of it, you may even involve the tendon or ligaments around that area as well. Now, if you get a lot of swelling and bruising, it means that you've likely torn quite a few blood vessels and that's the reason for all the swelling and the bruising. Depending on how badly you've injured the body part, the inflammatory phase can last for anything between three to seven days, as I've said. Um, and what happens during this phase is all of the damaged cells needs to be removed. So a clot forms inside, kind of like you know when you fall or you braise your skin and uh, um, you get a scab on your skin it's the same thing that happens inside the body except it's a soft clot that forms and this clot also will act as the scaffolding for the new cells to come and attach to but the inflammatory phase is quite important because that's the way that the cell this um, the body gets rid of the broken cells so you have these specific cells that comes in and they eat the broken cells up so inflammation has been given a bad name or throughout the years because everybody grabs anti-inflammatories and things and try to get the inflammation down when they're injured. But actually we now understand that the inflammatory phase is a very important part of the healing process. So they are now discouraging people to take anti-inflammatories within the first five days of sustaining injuries unless you have excessive swelling and excessive inflammation. So if you can get away with just using um, ice instead of anti-inflammatories, that's much better. The other thing that you should really stay away from is any corticosteroids, um, like cortisone injections within that period, because that really stops the healing process from happening. The other important thing, now I'm hoping if you're going to the gym that you're not a smoker, but if you do smoke, just know that nicotine actually also stops the healing process. That's why you see smokers often look a lot older, their skin and things later in life, because it doesn't regenerate that quickly. So what do you do during this, the first five to seven days of an injury? Well, the first thing is 
to protect that injury site. So if you feel your calf muscle go while you're exercising, then stop what you're doing. Because if you keep on exercising at that moment, that calf muscle is now weaker than what it used to be. So you will actually, it, it will take less force to injure it further. Also, if you keep on running on it or keep on doing exercise on it, you will cause more swelling and more bleeding. And the pressure from that can actually injure other cells because it can cause them to not get the blood supply that they need to recover or to just survive, to be honest. So it's the old acronym of RICE, which is rest, um, immobilize, so that you protect it, um, compress. Now, when I say compression, it's basically to stop the initial bleeding and to help a little bit with the swelling. So the initial compression within the first 10 minutes can be quite firm. But after that, be careful, because if you put too much compression onto a, um, an injury, you can actually stop the blood supply and make it worse again. So it's quite it's more think of it as firmness rather than strong compression. Um, then also, as I said, ice. So the ice is quite useful um, because that can limit the swelling because it stops bleeding, um, but it can also act as a slight anti-inflammatory function so that you don't get quite excessive inflammation, but you don't stop the whole press process either. Then the important bit that's missing from rice is the M at the end that physios have started put, putting in these days, which stands for movement. Now, when I say movement, it's not trying to do your full movement. It's just keeping the body part gently active within limits of pain. The research has actually shown that if you do that, your recovery time is quicker. Um, so don't be overprotective. Yes, of course, if it's painful, just keep it still for a while. But as soon as you can, try to just gently move the body part. So that's your first five days after an injury. So you'll agree to exercise that specific injury site at that point would be a little bit stupid um, because you'll just re-tear or you'll just further injure that site. Now the next phase is the pr uh, pr proliferation phase, which can last between 14 and 21 days. Now these phases aren't set that this one stops, that one starts. They all overlap a little bit. During the proliferation phase, you, you get new cells, you build new cells. The body produces more collagen, more muscle cells, depending on what you've injured. The problem is that all of these new cells kind of just gets put there like spaghetti on a plate. So they're not aligned as they should be in the muscle. They are all tangled and they're not strong cells yet. They're quite fine cells. So during this phase, although the wound is getting a little bit stronger, it's still quite weak because these fibers aren't quite functional yet. Um, and that's why I'm going to jump onto the remodeling phase immediately because I feel that they interact a little bit. So the remodeling phase is the third phase and that overlaps quite a lot with the proliferation phase because during this phase the body now realizes which um, has to align these cells in the direction that you need them to be aligned in and make them stronger so let me explain how this happens so the new cells form they're in a total wrong position your brain realizes which way to align these cells through gentle movement so we um, call it mechanical um, strain basically because if you can imagine my bicep muscle say for instance I've given it a slight muscle strain or a tear there now imagine the muscle fibers all aligned in funny positions I want them to be in this aligned in this direction so if I gently move my arm up and down I'm tugging on the sides of the muscle fibers and I'm telling them I want you to be aligned in this direction now you will agree that at this point where I've got new muscle fibers, they're not thick yet, they're still quite fine. Um, you can't go and do heavy weights that, like the ones you've done before they were injured because you will just re-tear them. So you've got to cut it back um, to the point where you can do the full range of movement without pain before you can even think about starting to load it up with, um, with weight. And that's where I'm quite excited about the eGym system that change has in the gym. Um, now, you guys who may have used that system, you'll know that um, you can set it perfectly for your joint range of movement. You can limit your range of movement. So say for instance, my arm 
hurts when it gets there, but it's okay to train up until there. You can actually set that equipment that it doesn't allow you to go below um, that point. And you can also set the resistance that it's so low that it that is just enough to strengthen it up. So how does the body know to strengthen things up? Um, okay, so what happens is if you strain the new muscle fibers just enough that it's a little bit hard, but not hard enough to tear them, the brain realizes that, oh, okay, that was quite hard. I think we need stronger muscle fibers there. And it rebuilds them a bit stronger. So the next time you train, you can do a little bit more. And then that acts as a signal again to the brain that, oh, okay, that was good, but it was still hard. So we need to make it a little bit stronger. The key lies in not overstepping that mark and understanding that you need enough rest periods in between. Now, I'm a big, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? I love the concept of relative rest. Relative rest means that you rest from the activities that causes you discomfort or strains that injury in the wrong way while you carry on with the things that are safe. And the reason I like this is one, it stops you from losing all your fitness, fitness and two, it also actually keeps the blood supply. Um, I've lost my words now. <laughs> gives you a better blood supply and blood and circulation is needed for better nutrients. So you actually help your injury heal quicker. So again, let's come to, come back to the um, example of a calf strain. So yes, you may not be able to run and yes, you may not be able to jump, but you may still, you can still do everything from the knees up basically. So you can do squats, you can do knee extension exercises, you can do anything for the core, you can do anything for the upper body. You may even be able to start back cycling gently bef long before you can run. And the gentle, um, the gentle act action of the bike can improve the circulation in the calf muscle and help to strengthen the injury again. So it's all about being clever about it. Another um, example of relative rest, again, let's think of the calf muscle is if you go running in the swimming pool rather than running outside. If we think of um, upper body, say for instance, you've strained your shoulder. Now, nothing stops you from exercising the other side or the positions that doesn't actually use that painful bit. So coming back to the um, example of a bicep strain, yes, you won't be able to do bicep curls. You won't likely be able to do overhead pulling things, but you may be able to do um, flies or you may be able to do, um, what's another example? So biceps works in this position. So you may be able to do um, tricep ex extensions with the arms with a pulley system. Um, it's all just about identifying the movements that you can do and making sure that you don't do the things too hard that they actually affect the other body parts. And again, that's where I find that it works quite well when I work closely together with personal trainers, because I can identify the things that you can do and I can identify the limits to where you should be working. And personal trainers are really usually very good at then sticking to these limits and being creative, thinking of another other exercises that you can do with the rest of the body so that you don't get bored. Of course, the big thing with um, an injury is also that it can often derail your habit of exercise. And it's quite heartbreaking when you've managed to do put all the hard work in for a good six months and you're really enjoying exercise just to be injured, then take a prolonged period of time off. And then you find you actually just don't have the mojo to get back to training. So it's always better to try and keep something going um, rather than stop altogether. OK, so let's recap. The phases of healing is your inflammatory phase, during which you've got to be really nice to the injury and protect it a little bit, give a gentle range of movement exercises, but nothing into pain. And you can use ice to help with the swelling um, and inflammation. And that lasts for roughly five to seven days. Then you've got your proliferation phase where your new cells form. But remember, these cells are still li lying around in the wrong direction and you need gentle movement to start telling it which direction it needs to lie into um, or realign itself into. And then you need during the remodeling phase, you need gentle, careful strengthening so that you get it stronger, but without actually breaking it back down.
Thank you for watching. If you would like to learn more about preventing sports injuries, make sure you hit the subscribe button. See you next time.